Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to uh, Oral Gibbs Live, coming to you live here from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And with me this evening is none other than MP, Mr. Franklin Myers. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Oral. And thank you for accepting the invitation. You are also a uh, faction leader yeah. and deputy leader of the UP Party. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, your party is the party that's right now in government. The gov part of the governing coalition, yes. With a 10 seat majority. With a two thirds majority, that's correct. Oh, I um, understand that you almost lost one seat recently. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> politics is as, as such as um, you, you're going to have, it's like a relationship, um, but you're going to have your ups and downs, you're going to have your, 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 your disagreements, mm -hmm. but hopefully uh, the end result will be uh, everyone knows that they're part of the, the, the thing for, for the government, for, for St. Martin for the best interest of St. Martin, they're not the best interest of oneself. So right now, you can say that the, the 10 seat majority is still there. Well, for now, you know, uh, yeah. for now, uh, we don't know. And that's the, the, the unique thing with, um, with government and, and, mm -hmm. and, and governing is you don't control um, anyone's mind or their, their direction. Each and every party, each and every individual have a, a direction. Um, we can only try to achieve what we try to achieve through, through dialogue. And um, there's going to be disagreements, mm -hmm. but we don't have to be disagreeable. You know, we can um, disagree on how we get from here to Marigot. You could go through French Quarter, you could go through Cold Bay, but ultimately we, we will get to Marigot. You can walk to the hill. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's been a while now since um, the government has formed, and a lot of people are wondering what's happening because there's still two ministries to be filled and uh, the prime minister's now also acting Romy minister acting Romy. and then you have another minister's also acting in, um, VSA. Yeah. yeah. How, how is this going to work out because it's, it's approaching for the half year now? Well, it, it's prob it has oh, been a half yeah. year since the ministers are, are in the, um, it's about eight or nine months since the um, members of, of, of uh, parliament right. have yeah. been sworn in. But we have to remember how we got to this position. We got to this position because um, shortly after the, uh, the United People's Party and at that time uh, the independent member Cornelius de Weaver decided that we will form a government. Um, they were all kind of been threatened uh, the ways again coming from the, the Dutch. Um, basically a clear-cut indication that they did not want the the members of the UP party to, to be in the ministry, in particular, um, our leader, Theo Heilige, as prime minister. That was the, that was the gripe. Um, he subsequently withdrew, and we, we already had candidates in place for which we wanted to put as ministers. Um, and then names were put forward. Some of those names did not pass the new enhanced screening. Uh, and then what happened after that we, we had a deadline to put a government in place. And we managed to, at that time, so to speak, scrape five ministers together to put there so you can have a government. Now, yes, the process is taking more, um, it is taking longer than anticipated, but you must understand also in there, there were a lot of um, uh, rumors and instabilities and threats of um, withdrawing support from the government uh, and we, you're not just not able to concentrate on governing. You're um, putting out a little bushfire here, a little bushfire there, and what is happening is ultimately governing gets hurt, and by extension, the community of St. Martin gets hurt because, unfortunately, we have not reached to that level of political maturity where we, p we are truly putting St. Martin um, above and in, in, in front of everything else, and that, that is, at times, the, the, the sad thing. So... To get back to your question was the other two ministers. That process now, names have been submitted, but that process in and of itself, oral, because of the new enhanced screening, takes three months. So years ago when the process would have been a month, a couple of weeks, that's, that's no longer you're talking um, three months now before uh, that process is completed. But for, for more reasons than one, it is very... Um, it is very important that we have the seven ministers because the flip side of that is um, when there was the, the, the 
the disgruntledness with the USP and the, the Minister of Justice, had that, for example, um, gone down, we would have no government because it's a maximum of seven, a minimum of, a minimum of five. We would have had no, um, no government had he resigned because the process would have taken another three months in order to have, to have um, a, uh, uh, another minister put in place. So it is very crucial that we do um, have those other two ministers appointed. But I know for sure one name is um, submitted and we are waiting on the next one for, for VSA and um, that is being worked out. So I understand that um, your party leader is the one to responsible for appointing the Roman minister and that the, the other minister is the responsibility of um, MP or the Weaver, is that correct? Mm, yes and no. Um, in, 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 our, in, our talks, in, in, in our talks, what has been decided is that um, MP, the, 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 the Economic Affairs Ministry, mm -hmm. will go to um, the, our coalition partner, Ms. Um, Leona Marlin Romeo. Hence, our minister, Mr. Connor, will be transferred to, to Vromi, and then the VSA minister would be, um, would be also submitted. So there will be a reshuffling of the, mm -hmm. the, the ministers in, in, the, in the Council of Ministers, and ultimately then it will run, we will have our seven ministers. Do you anticipate this to happen just uh, after the recess of Parliament? It, it will simultaneously mm -hmm. be about that, because if you estimate about three months, it will bring us somewhere between um, September and uh, end of August, sometime in September. Integrity Chamber, mm -hmm. uh, the Minister of Justice was in The Hague in May, returned here to a firestorm of protests mm -hmm. from Parliament mm -hmm. in terms of the authority of, of uh, the government to sign any agreement with the Dutch government without the approval of Parliament. And uh, one of your coalition partners uh, at the time threatened to, to uh, have that minister resign. I think submitted a letter and the minister did not uh, resign. There was a parliament meeting mm -hmm. of which uh, your party and the majority made some recommendation to changes and all of that. So where are we now? Uh, you have to realize something because everything is getting muddy in the water. What has happened, Aurel, is after all of these integrity reports, the, the, the Samson Witt report, the Price Waterhouse report, after all these reports, in the Samson Witt report, which was a, uh, a recommendation that an integrity team be established, that study was commissioned by us as the government of St. Martin. And what, it, what happened was the Dutch looked to take that over and said that they were going to put, invoke Article 51 of the Kingdom Charter and invoke an inte integrity chamber. The Kingdom Council of State basically said, you have no grounds in which to impose a, a measure on St. Martin because St. Martin is in the process of dealing with their integrity chamber. The Minister of, uh, of Justice went to Holland on behalf of the Prime Minister because integrity falls under the Ministry of, of, of General Affairs on behalf of the Prime Minister and signed a protocol basically saying um, they're willing, the Dutch said they're willing to pull their measures off of the table, which were far reaching, far more reaching consequences. They're willing to pull their measures off of the table and um, have some input in the one that St. Martin was going to propose, because it was going to come anyway. And then they will then go with, um, then they will approve. The argument came about with the parliamentarians, how binding is the protocol? because the Council of Ministers cannot bind Parliament to any agreement. When Parliament speaks, Parliament, when the Council of Ministers speaks, they speak for government. When Parliament speaks, they speak on the behalf of the people. They are the legislators. So when the proposal came back and um, the USP rightfully was um, upset based on how it went down at that time, uh, my colleague MP Franz Richardson was in Holland um, and he was not aware of the, 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 the protocol he found out while he was there. And rightfully so, he was, he was upset. Uh, the 
flip side of that is if this integrity chamber, as the Minister of Justice said, is ours, then we said it well, it must reflect us. Um, the Dutch have a, a, a saying that we cannot supervise ourselves, so they will have to supervise, um, supervise us for them, <laughs> you know. And we are saying no, we are capable, we are ca quite capable of supervising ourselves. And that's why we came with recommendations to have changes to the integrity chamber, which is supposed to be ours. This is what was proposed by um, the, the commission that we study, and um, their measures was pulled off the table. This is supposed to be ours. So we said, hey, it must reflect us, and we must reflect us, and we came with 15 changes to, to the law, so, in which we think were reasonable changes. Um, we could have gone in, of course, and do the whole um, screaming and yelling, but it would not have been something that, and we could have, the whole parliament could have done and vote, voted away with it and said no integrity chamber. But the issue is not that whether we want an integrity chamber or not, because I think all of the parliamentarians, if you ask them, they have no problem with an integrity chamber being established. But we do have a problem, a fundamental problem, with another mechanism being put in place where the Dutch, again, will have a supervisory role over um, St. Martin. And a lot of people think that this relates primarily to politicians alone, but it's across the board. Well, I guess um, a lot of us looking at that uh, parliamentary meeting, I didn't see the meeting where it was claimed that you said you prefer to live standing than to... I prefer to, I prefer to live on my feet mm. than to die on my knees. And so then, um, if there was a vote in parliament and you had to vote for integrity chamber in the form that Minister of Justice had brought it back, would you vote for it? You see, and this is where the, the water's being muddy up because when we had the central committee meeting, which was prior to the, the public meeting, we had the central committee, and to, to the general public, this is semantic, but when we had the central committee and the Dutch uh -huh. proposal was on the table, is it was in relation to the Dutch proposal I made my statement because I said on August the 30th when the National Alliance, the Democratic Party in the USP on August the 29th, on the 30th, the morning of the 30th, had formed a government. There were congratulatory messages coming from Holland, from in particular Bosman and Barack. 25 days later when MP Cornelia signed a governing accord with the United People's Party, it's only then measures, threats of measures came to St. Martin, 25 days after. So for 25 days, there wasn't a peep from Holland. Everything was congratulatory. So it shows that they have an agenda. It shows that they have an agenda. Now, following, subsequent to that, now they come with a proposal of an integrity chamber basically saying we are not going to wait on St. Martin to establish theirs. We are going to invoke Article 51. And Article 51 clearly states, states oral that in the event that the country is in chaos and not governable, the Kingdom Council of Ministers have the authority to invoke um, Article 51. We, were, we are not at that stage. And St. Martin was in the process of establishing um, a integrity chamber based on that and I still say that I prefer to live on my knees uh, live on my feet and um, die on my feet and live on my knees and I still maintain that however it does not mean that I Franklin Myers as a representative of the people it gives me the right to be um, unreasonable I still have to be reasonable and if again if this is something that is ours this is our integrity chamber not the one that's on the table from the Dutch. This is ours. I think we must have a major input into our integrity chamber because it will ultimately govern the integrity of our people. Well, it's good to have you clarify that. Okay. And I want to go back a little bit because uh, there was a time when you was a minister and the Dutch government was very angry because you refused to allow that submarine cable mm -hmm. to come in Correct. to St. Martin. After a different minister came in, he approved it. Correct. Could it be then that the, the Dutch government said, well, we don't want to see people like 
Mr. Myers and Mr. Halliger in government because but, but they don't because, cooperate with us. Because we fight for our people. Um, and and my, the, the, the problem with the refusal of the submarine cable had nothing to do with whether they were Dutch, English, or Chinese. It had to do with that cable was a grant. While St. Martin um, Telephone Company had a loan for $18 million in which they went out on the market, no grant, no gift. And we said any submarine cable that is landing in St. Martin will have to land in the manhole mm. of the local telephone company and there will be no resale from that cable. If the Dutch or the British or anyone for that matter pays for a cable and they come in and they have the rights to land, then they are competing on an equal level with the, um, the telecom company. But it would have been catastrophic for Smithcombs to have that done, and ultimately it was done because they wanted to not only land in St. Martin, but land in UTS's manhole, which is at the time a foreign company. But you know, uh, with uh, MP Myers, when you look, you've been commissioner and minister responsible for telecommunication mm -hmm. for a while. Our neighbors across the border, mm -hmm. You know, they have incredible speed. This program tonight that I'm doing with you, if I'm lucky to get it uploaded, it will take me eight to nine hours, sometimes 14 hours. When are the people of this island, Dutch Simran, it's going to get some kind of respect when it comes to Thailand with its outrageous prices, poor service, and we're stuck in an era where just across the border, we can get huge, or we can get a lot of speed, upload speed, and over here, we're literally crawling. I think a lot of the, the, the thing with the, the speed or else has to do with the, the backbone of Telem, because the fiber cable, in essence, in essence gave um, Telem the capability of handling high traffic simultaneously. But isn't it owned by Smithcom? Which yes. is a telem company? T yes, yeah. all, it's, all, it's all one company. Right. But what I'm saying, it's all, it's all one. But the backbone, which I'm saying, the, the servers are, are what is the, the major problem with, um, with telem. In, so you need an upgrade? A major upgrade. A major upgrade. The thing with telem is, um, I think because of lack of, of competition in, in certain areas, and actually, um, a vision, how to take the, 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 the country mm -hmm. forward um, as far as telecom. I think that is a, a, a major problem. And if you look oral between, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but if you look at the developments in telecom in the period that I was there and the vision that we had, that is all stuff. There's, there's no major um, development as it opposed to where you expect to be with your, your internet, where you expect to be with your data, it would have been even more catastrophic at this point had we not had a fiber cable that was pulled in because most of the smartphones, the era that we're in now, is data. Right. And had that not been the case, it would have been even, it would have been even slower. Because yeah. the, and, the, and the price would have been even more because you would have had to buy bandwidth from the competitor to resell it. You know, when you look at the region, and you look at the world, and you look at St. Martin, as a leader in the Northeastern Caribbean in many areas, we're not, a, we're not a leader in telecommunications at all right now. And it's quite embarrassing because I think it's also hurting this island's economic development. For many businesses, including our business, we can't really do what we want to do because we just can't get that bandwidth and that speed. Again, it goes back to, to, to vision aura. Um, you have to have uh, I remember Don Hughes always told me something when I was a, a young man coming up. He said, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I have built myself based on those, those very words. And it's true. If you do not have direction where you're going, ultimately, um, you're like a rudderless ship. You're like a rudderless ship. I'm going to give you an example with Telem. Um, Telem had its, its, its turmoil as a, as a company, um, whether they would sell, whether you're going to sell majority shares, whether you're going to merge, all of, all of that. But 
we have spent so much time talking on those about those things, we have lost track of what is really important. And what is really important is having your telecommunication to a level where you provide service to your community. Because the wall is now accustomed to these, these, um, these things. And I, I, I know the, the very thing when you want to download something, it takes a long time for it to, uh, to download. But it goes, it goes beyond that. When the, 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 the land, the fixed landline, um, was a, a dwindling market, cell is good, the cellular thing is what basically has kept um, Telem alive. But the data is where the future is. As we go more into the future, more data will be necessary. How do you put an infrastructure to ensure that when the demands of the generations that come after us, when those demands are on your hand, that you can actually deal with it. And that is the, um, that is the vision I feel that is, is, is missing from our, I, that company. I don't want people to think that I'm, taking, that I'm being unfair to tell them here, but I think you know, there are other government companies that are well managed and are doing very well. But I'm just very disappointed because I understand that servers are quite expensive and just a few companies really made them for the kind of business that Telem is in. But at the same time, as a government-owned company, I don't see the justification for charging for the internet what they're doing right now, given the speed that you're getting. And at the same time, the cellular service is also um, nothing to be proud of, because uh, I understand this economy of scales is extremely expensive. This uh, telling me to understand looking at 4G. You mm -hmm. can't even handle 3G. You're looking mm -hmm. at 4G. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I just don't get it. And I think. A lot of people have resigned to just give up. I've spoken to other members of parliament, and they said, well, you know, this is not much I can do. You go to Puerto Rico, you go to Aruba, and the service has been offered. These are all competitors, mm -hmm. and we're just lingering behind. And no one at Telem seems to understand the importance of the, of the, the industry here. I, and it goes back to what I said, Oral. If you do not, if you do not um, put out a plan, what it is you want to achieve, and set targets, of what it is you want to tell him does not have a, C, a CEO. Um, why? Again, again, exactly. Why? The last CEO of um, Telem was the, 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 the Dutchman, forgot his name, and, bef and prior to that was the very Minister of Justice, Dennis Richardson, on an administ administrative level, and Aubrey Younger uh, at, a, at a technical technical level. But besides that, so all of those years, Telem is now feeling the effects of that because, yes, they have a nice building. They may have um, a certain degree of equipment, but there is no direction. There's no one today that you can say, well, um, where, what do you expect in, in, mm -hmm. in five years? What do you expect in 10 years? The fiber cable was pulled in mm -hmm. in, I believe, 2006 with a life expectancy of 20 years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you have to maximize that in that period of in that period of time. But if you do not, when I was a commissioner, they had started with a, a, a triple play program, where they would give you um, telephone, cable, and and, and what happened to that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and after that, it went away. Mm. You see. So again, they are not looking for new revenue streams. Mm. And if you're not looking for new revenue stream, then you're in trouble. Many of our neighbors right next door are already offering triple play. Exactly. Um, you know, Minister, uh, MB Myers, Juliana International Airport, mm -hmm. is that a government-owned company? Yes. It's yes. quite strange for the public. A lot of people can't understand why a government-owned company is having so much difficulty obtaining billing permit for FBO billing. Probably I, can explain. I, I, from what I've, I've gathered, because mm -hmm. you, you got to understand my, my, my role as a member of parliament is not necessarily an administrative right, executive right. level. We think uh, that maybe you might know more than the rest no, of the No, but what I've understood is when the request for the building permit for the, 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 the FBO um, came in, what one of the major problems was the the request was submitted in the, um, the operation company name. And when the research was done, the operational company mm -hmm. did not own the land that they were requesting the building. 
It is the holding that holds all of the assets. All of the assets of um, the airport is in PJIE holdings. But that was done after the problem with the Italians and the et cetera, right? Exactly. Uh, so, uh, so now you have a holding, and your holding have all your assets, and then you have an operational company. The operational company does, so, or does all of the, mm -hmm. the operation. The request was done in the operational company, and then the, um, the minister said, well, it has to, the request has to come from the holding. And I think that process has already started. Okay. We have another company, GBE. GBE has gone through some difficult periods. The late Mr. Lambert did a remarkable job of mm -hmm. bringing that company back. Now the public is hearing so much um, problems, contracts assigned with companies, agreement is made for X amount per month, but then uh, payments are made over and beyond those agreements. Uh, Parliament met, and the Prime Minister is now asking for more time, and people are wondering what's happening now here with GB because it doesn't look good in the public eye. Again, unfortunately, um, oral when we have certain companies, certain things that happen in the companies, of course, um, they're government-owned companies, and they and they get in the whole political sphere. Again, you had the board of GB that sub, sub, submitted a request to the, um, the shareholder rep asking for the extension of the, the COO. GB itself don't have a CEO. Here we go again. Um, and only two months later, to say that um, we do not want the, um, we do not want you to give an extension, we want to, to get rid of him. This, the shareholder rep followed the advice of the, the original thing and um, it all got blown up a proportion. And of course now, when it was blown out of proportion, the things that um, the board felt that was um, justifiable started to come to light. And about check accusation, now I don't know, again, I'm going on basically what I've, I've heard in, as I sat in parliament, checks being signed, amounts being um, changed because every, every company has a limit as to what they can, um, they can the managing director can sign. Anything else, you need the approval of the board. It's the same in the Council of Ministers. Ministers have a limit to, as to what he can sign. Anything above and beyond a certain amount, the Council of Ministers have, have to decide. The same thing applies for, for, for GB. And some of those um, things, I don't know if they're true or not, have now started to, 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 to rear their head. And uh, it's unfortunate for the company. But oral, what is the, one of the most important things is we are going to have to start to seriously look at our um, young professionals and start to allow them to, to develop, grow, and, 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 and be in charge of these companies. How you feel now? Because you've been in, in politics now for how many years? 21 years. 21 years. Time goes so fast. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, uh, and um, at the time, your good friend, you started with... Um, Joseph Richardson. Joseph Richardson and uh, Louis Laves, right? When you went to I ran, I ran with Louis Laves the following year oh, in, okay. in 1995. But in 1994, mm -hmm. um, I ran as the number three candidate on the Partnership for Political Reform. Okay. So it's come a, a long way. Okay, yeah, I've come a long way indeed. And, you know, the people of, the people of St. Martin is who, have, who gave me that opportunity. And one of the things I always said that I was blessed with, um, mm -hmm. because when I, when I came into office, by no means I was not a, a dynamic um, politician. I learned as I went along, but they were very um, patient and, and forgiving with me, and they gave me the opportunity to grow. Right. So it shows that if we give our own the, 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 a chance, um, we, can do, we can do great things. But are you surprised as to what's happening right now? Because, you know, the, there was a letter the other day, and the person accused the public of being impatient, but the public is not the one that made a promise. Your party made a promise of a new medical center, and they're still waiting to know and, what's going to happen. And, and, the, and, the, and they will get a new medical center. Um, we've made a lot of promises before, and um, we have um, lived up to those promises. Mm -hmm. A, if you put a, a picture of a medical center on a, a political post and you say, well, this is coming, well, fine, it is coming. But mm -hmm. 
first, your, your first aspect must be to get elected, and after you're elected, then you have to get the financing, start to seek out the, the proper things for, for it to go. Um, it's not going to happen one, two, three. All of these things that I remember when, the, for example, the causeway was open uh, in, in uh, MP Theo Heliger's speech, he said this is something that has been 10 years in the making. You know, so it's, it's not going to come, of course, we want to see it. Listen, more than wanting to see it oral, we need it. You know, it's a necessity. But above and beyond just building a medical facility, because if you build a brand new medical facility and you don't have the, 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 the doctors, well, we're right back where we start. You know what I'm saying? We need the, all of the medical referrals. We spend 30 million guilders a year in medical referrals to Colombia, Santo Domingo, and about. And I myself just got mm -hmm. back from, from um, Colombia where I was surprised. I did a hand count while I was down there. I left on the 30th and I came back on the 4th. I did a hand count in, in the area mm -hmm. where I was staying. And there were 25 people from St. Martin. Wow. In, but that's just in my little area mm. where I was at, at um, in Bogota, Colombia. So, um, but this cost, if you do an average of $700 a ticket and $50 a day, because if you have a Berkeleitas, it's $25 a day, um, you have a Berkeleitas, $50 a day, and transportation, medical fees, that's astronomical. And this continues. If we continue at that rate, we're going to have a serious um, financial problem where our health care is concerned. That's why it's not only for a, a political party to be able to pat ourselves on the shoulder and say, um, yeah, we build a medical center, but it's something that if we don't deal with it, um, St. Martin is going to be in, in dire straits. You know, you've been around politics now two decades, as you mentioned. Uh, you were at one time also commissioner for public, public health, health, right? Yes. Now, help us here because maybe I'm a fool and no, no one I'm speaking about, and I'm not a doctor, but when I drove, when I drove across the, the border just recently, I was amazed at all the specialists on the French side. And when I look at here, I'm still surprised that this policy that You've got to work at the St. Martin Medical Center. You've got to live up to the, to the tariff that is imposed on doctors by the SZV. You can't attract exactly. specialists like that. But I wanted to hold that thought. Uh, I just want to take this call for you. Oral Gibbs live in caller. Hello. You're on live caller. Okay, so what do you think about, about that? I agree because we have a social tariff structure. Um, and if, again, all of these things have to be have to be looked at because in attracting specialists when they when they did the medical center mm -hmm. that was one of the things they they did to try to um, put more money into their coffers because if the specialist is going to be outside then the medical center is not necessarily going to get the rent so the medical center will rent you the the, the facility for you to operate and it would make it a, a, a better functioning facility one-stop shopping which in and of itself was not a bad idea the problem is healthcare costs kept rising, while the tariff structure, the service that you're providing, um, remained the same. And it, there was a period where it was even more uh, beneficial to the St. Martin Medical Center to send you home than to keep you in the hospital because the cost of keeping you in the hospital was much more than what you were paying to be in the hospital. And that's where um, we wanted to adjust the, the tariffs. But as a member of the executive council and being a commissioner, that authority laid in the federal government's hand. Now the situation has changed. And um, uh, the, 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 the uh, presentation that was done by public, public health uh, to the, the, executive, the, the members of parliament not too long ago, they are also working on readjusting um, the, the tariff structure. I hope it changed because, as you can recall, your, your friend, um, Dr. Friday, mm -hmm. when he came back here, it was a fight, a Take fight, unnecessary, unnecessary fight. Unnecessary fight. And, and the, again, the hurtful part of something like that is, um, then why do you send your own away? You, yeah. you have, and what was, what was strange, Dr. Ben Whiteman, who was the director of public health for the Netherlands and Tillys, um, and I know Randy since Randy was a, a little boy, um, and he, 
we were in executive council and we were going over and I asked him the question about um, when is the, the documentation going to be approved and he said, you know, it has already been approved, he can, his papers are good and he said, that, that young man is going to be an asset to your community. So here it is someone who is the, the director of public health in the Netherlands in Tilly sitting saying that a local St. Martin boy is going to be a, because he trained in robotic surgery and all of that, he's going to be an asset. And then when it came actually for us now, stepping up to the plate, it became very difficult. I heard um, the, the, the deceased um, Eldridge Van Potten, and I never, Eldridge, if anyone know the history between Eldridge and I, we, we put heads a lot. Mm -hmm. It didn't, doesn't mean that I, I didn't agree with a lot of the things that he said, but one of the things, interestingly enough, that he said, he said that, um, in St. Martin, the host has taken on the role of the guest, and the guest has taken on the role of the host. And that is because we have been, we were so friendly for so long, people actually take advantage of our, friend, of our friendliness. So over the years, the very people and the very laws and, and stuff that are put in place, they're not put in place for us to, um, to I won't say they're not put in place for us to advance, but the policies mm. are to shut us out while everyone else could um, come in and be beneficial. I'm glad you mentioned that because when you read the requirements mm -hmm. for professionals to work for the government of Samaritan, mm -hmm. you've seen sometimes they need a lawyer with three, five years experience, but if you got young lawyers, well, how are they gonna get that? Mm -hmm. And then I, I saw another one of the Ministry of Justice looking for, um, I can't remember the, the name now, but anyway, this was for a person to, con to I think it was for Secretary General, mm -hmm. Minister of Justice, right. 15 years, yeah. then you don't want the Samaritan person anymore. This is crazy. Exactly. The Ministry of Justice, which I, I assume the people of Samaritan voted for the government, mm -hmm. who placed the minister there. How could you place an ad looking for plus 15 years experience, and you'll never get one of us. And this is what is fundamentally wrong with us. Because what happened, um, based on all kind of rules, mm -hmm. from all kind of people, not us, not our rules, and that's, we go back to the integrity chamber, based on all kind of rules from all kind of people, what happens is we are so busy following the rules that we, we don't look at the fact that, hey, these things don't apply to us. We are a developing country in the early stages of our, our developmental, uh, in the early parts of our de developmental stage. We've done a lot of good things over those years, but what is our number one resource? You know, any country's number one resource is your human resource. We have to develop them and ensure that they have a place. Now, politically, it sounds like a cliche, but the truth of the matter is we as a people also have to be, and not a politician, every segment of this community have to be proud and happy when we see one of our own in a position, and that is not a reality today. Aurel Gibbs, live, young caller, hello. Yes, good night, Jay. Good night, how are you doing? I am here, I'm here, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? You sound strong, though. You're speaking very powerful there. Yes, it's just like a whole thing, God. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, sometimes the doctors need to be more careful when they're dealing with patients. I was suffering with my two legs. And I went up there to the clinic where they were normally, and the lady doctor gave me an injection. And from the time that I got that injection, I cannot walk, stand up, or do anything for myself. I am here at home, like I'm crippled. Okay. But I'm, on the other side, I'm still glad to hear my people and white lady is trying to give me so I know. It's a good work for them. Uh -huh. And as well, I would like to tell Mr. Myers, thank you. I would like to see him because I home the way he just telling you. Hello? Hello? You there, ma'am? Yeah, I can't walk and do anything for myself. From the time I got up the injection. Okay. All right, so anything else you want to say to MP Myers? Well, I will ask to tell Mr. Myers, keep the good work up with faith, everything, everything takes time and life. 
Thank you. But God bless him, God. I know him. I said I know his mom and everything, but he know me also. Okay. So tell him, I, God bless him with both of you. Thank Keep you. the ball rolling. Thank you. Thank, thanks for calling. All right. Okay. okay, take care. Bye. Yeah, so, you know, and she said something there about doctors' behavior towards patients. I'm getting a lot of people, local people, complaining to me about the treatment of certain doctors at the St. Martin Medical I could tell you about one in particular. Um, and and I, I had a run in with him because a girl that I grew up with, Reverend Mona Lake, um, she was actually a prodigy of my mother. She's now a, a minister in the Methodist Church. She, she took sick and um, she was in intensive care for days and her condition wasn't improving and her mother, Muriel Lake, who I call mother, you know, went to the SZV to say, well, you know, I would like a second opinion mm. for my daughter because she isn't improving. SZV said, well, we need a letter from the doctor saying that she has to be sent out. They were treating her in this medical center for um, this particular doctor for sleep apnea. So she called me and asked me if I can take her to the hospital so she could get this letter. We go, we knock on this doctor's office and he comes out. So I get up and I explain to him, um, we need a letter from you because the SZV. And his main concern at that point was, who went to the SZV? So I said, I went to the SZV. And he then proceeded to try to close me out of his office. And I said, if you're going in there, I'm coming in your office. Because this is the second time you've spoken to me like this. He did twice before. I said, but it's the last. Anyway, long and short of the story, she was flown out that evening to Santo Domingo and was diagnosed with thrombosis of the lung. Wow. You see? Thrombosis of the lung. So had she not been, had she not been flown out, but the, 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 the bedside manner is something that... Uh, is left to be desired. And in his country, mm. I know he wouldn't be able to speak to his, his people like that. Oh, is he still at the St. Martin Medical Center? He's still at the St. Martin Medical Center. Oh, that's not good. Let's take a call for you. Oral Gibbs Live and Caller. Hello? Is there a caller? Not there. Um, also, the, the issue of uh, CFT. Mm -hmm. CFT is claiming that St. Martin is claiming more income than they actually earn mm -hmm. in a particular year. And right now, Sim Martin doesn't have a member on the CFT. CFT. And we're in the yeah. process of having the, a member put on as well. Um, there's going to be, we're going to take a lot of time oral in this recess because, again, they've been, we've been outing fires um, left, right, and center. The reality is, um, even in our present coalition, we had a couple members just went to um, Curacao to Flag Day. And when... Um, they got back, of course. Um, they were members who are members of our present coalition and, and opposition members that was also in Curacao that were steady in Curacao trying to negotiate to break the government. And how can you continue to run a country and deal with appointment of ministers, appointment of someone to the... Um, to, to, to the CFT, appointment of some to the OPNA, appointment of our um, director of the local central St. Martin's thing of Central Bank, Central Bank, when you have to deal with with knowing that every and not not someone from the opposition, someone that is your coalition partner. And I mean But that's uh, going on all the time. <laughs> exactly. But you know, um, the reality is, yeah. I, I understand the political game, but the reality is you are, I, I am like this, I'm, I'm like this. If we're friends, we're friends. And if we're enemies, then I know that you are my enemy. But one of the things that don't sit good to me is that if you are my friend, and then you are doing things, or you're part of something, and you are doing things to, to, um, to, to, to hurt me, or to hurt the, the, the general, um, the general consensus of what it is we have um, negotiate, negotiated on. I, I believe we could always sit down like big men and women and discuss everything. We're not children. Yeah. We can discuss everything. But this behind the back manipulation here and there, um, it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing. I can imagine it's difficult for your government uh, to function, the government that you support, with a majority of 10 in parliament. I had the leader of your party here um, in 
in February, January of this year, and he predicted that he will have 10 seats, which, which he does. But at the same time, he cannot sleep because every time he put his head down, there's a siren going off right. to auto fire somewhere in Dutch Quarter, Middle Region. Right. How can you continue like this? You can't. You can. and, and parameters are, are going to have to be drawn um, uh, oral. You're going to have to basically say, well, you know, you, you, you're either for this country or you're not. Uh, We've seen the fiasco. We saw the fiasco that happened in the, in the first governing term. Um, we had three governments in four years. It was not beneficial to St. Martin. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the, 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 the coalition members um, realize that and they, they're saying it. That's the, that's the good thing. A lot of the, the members of the coalition are saying, no, St. Martin don't need it. Give the people stability. Give the people stability. If, if a government is in there and the people um, rejects that government, the people will have their chance to reject that government come election time. But this whole manipulating power moving and, and throwing down a government and, and thing, it, it, it makes us look more um, chaotic than we really are. And it isn't necessary. If, again, if you want to achieve something, the hospital is of utmost importance. We need to make sure something like that get off the ground. We need to make sure that we have a, a proper running facility here in St. Martin that could help our people. But instead of dealing with that, in putting all your efforts into that, what is the main concern? You're dealing with other stuff that really isn't important. But you got to deal with it. You got to meet with the person. You got to, you got to, you know, um, the, the Minister of Justice, he has to go because he signed a, a protocol. Well, he signed it on the behalf of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is the um, appointment of the United People's Party. If we were to give the Minister of Justice a vote of non-confidence, in essence, we are giving our Prime Minister a vote of non-confidence. We can't go to Parliament and do that when he is working on behalf of government. And ultimately, if Parliament takes a stand, and we take a stand in unison and say that if the Dutch is going to put their measures, let them put it. We're going to stand together and say we don't care. 15 members across the board, we, I will do it because I said it the first time. I will rather live on my feet then die on my feet and live on my knees. That still stands today. My premise hasn't changed. It hasn't changed, but I am not unreasonable. And I know moving forward, you're going to have to negotiate to achieve certain things. No one expected a proposal from us. We didn't soften our stance, but in that same meeting I said, if those changes that we recommend are not accepted or rejected, we are prepared to accept whatever it is the Dutch want to do. We are also prepared to do that. But we are showing that we can sit down with you and be rational, be rational and discuss and negotiate the best terms for St. Martin and his people. You know, on the 1st of July, at the Emilia Wilson Star Park, uh, His Excellency Governor Holiday gave a speech, which I think was the best speech I've ever heard from the governor. Mm -hmm. And he highlighted the problems and in a very specific and clear manner. And you know, MP Myers, we have a number of our young people that are unemployed. We have a number of our people that can't get good housing. And they can go on and on and on. And these people they don't care about an integrity chamber. What they care about is jobs and housing, health care, and they're looking to the government to provide this. And you're 100% right. And the flip side of that, the people who care about an integrity chamber, which is the Dutch, and forcing the integrity chamber with the attempt, their attempt to force the integrity chamber on the, um, the, the, the government of St. Martin, don't care about housing. They don't care about the unemployment. They don't care about our St. Martin Medical Center. Those are the things they say, you handle as government. But everything you do, contrary to that, they say that you're corrupt. And I have a problem with people taking a brush and dabbing every member. Um, just by being a, polit a politician, you're corrupt. I have a serious problem with that. I've remained quiet about it over the years because the person who um, I have learned a lot of politics from is Mr. Joseph Richardson. 
And he said, speak when you feel spoken to and react when you feel that they're talking about you. If they're not talking about you, don't react. But you, in St. Martin, automatically, and the world over, politicians do have a, a, a bad name, and um, there are those who have given politicians a bad name, but there are some good, there are some good, honest, hard-working politicians that care for their country. Contrary to what popular belief, popular belief is, there are those who want to go out and work for the benefit of their country because we all got to live here. But ultimately, Oral, if we do not, if we do not start to build sort of a nationalistic pride and be, um, be happy and truly happy with the developments of how we as a people succeed, we are doomed. And that will not be because of no Dutch government. That will be because of the people of St. Martin, ourselves. If we do not and cannot stand to see our people in a position, any position, if we cannot stand to see our people progress and be progressive, we are doomed. Because the very children that are unemployed, children are like sponges. They soak up everything. They, they, they aspire because of what they see. They can identify. I always say one of the reasons that I aspired to be a politician and a businessman is because when I was growing up in St. Martin, St. Martin people were the ones who was controlling this economy. So there was a lot of people at that time as a young boy to look up to. There was Vance James Jr., there was um, Rahul Illich, Reggie Pontiflet, my brother, and you just saw people getting into business and doing things. But, and we were proud. I remember the Mighty Cat sang a song. Remember, that is progress. We don't sing those kind of songs. Calypsonians don't sing those kind of songs no more. Because when we are progressing, it's, hmm, where he got that money from? Hmm. Yeah. And you see the tear announcer, but now the child who's watching that, why would a child aspire to be a politician? Tell me now, why? But, but don't you think sometimes politician, politicians also brought that upon themselves? Co correct, but it's not across the board. Or exactly. A, it's not across the board. You see what I'm saying? I, I get, and I don't, I'm not tooting my own horn, but if you look at, to me, you look at a fella, a, a guy like Dr. Lloyd Richardson. You look at George Pontiflet. Yeah, honest, to hard working me, to honest, hard working, honorable men. Honorable men. Claret Connor. You're going to tell me that just by virtue of them becoming a politician, their, 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 their hands are dirty, and that is, that is wrong. We, we don't have, we have a CEO of the harbor, we have a CEO of the airport, which are both locals, right? They are under more scrutiny than anyone else. But we don't have a CEO at GB, and we don't have a CEO at Telem, and there's no call from government to put a CEO there, a government-owned company. You, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's, so, so it's quiet. Okay, so let it, let it remain quiet because, you know, um, we're, no, we got to change that thinking. We got to want to see our own there. Um, one of the things that happened, and I find that was atrocious, William Brooks. He was a local guy, he was director of GB, and nobody on, the guards, uh, on God's green earth could tell me he was in sabotage. Well, I have to disagree you there because when it came to me, mm -hmm. um, he made some mistakes mm -hmm. and it became personal. And, and we all the time, I can't add it here, but I didn't sabotage. I called for his removal mm -hmm. on the grounds that I, I still st support today. And, and, and that is fine. The fact of the matter is, if he is, if he is a, a, a monster or we want, he's ours. And give me our monster a hundred times over because you want the CGB get and our government companies get quiet is um, when we don't have our own in those positions. Well, MP, we might be out of time, and I'm sorry we don't have much time because I have a lot I could tell you on that, but I just want to correct it there. I did not sabotage. No, um, I didn't say no, you did. No, you, you meant to sabotage. I, I knew him. He was brought in on the show two times. We treated him, gave him the red carpet, but then he became arrogant and obnoxious. And I didn't like that. Mm. And disrespectful to many of the people on this island. Mm. And that's why I called for his removal here in this program. And I still maintain my position. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But I want to thank you again for coming. Thanks for having me, Oracle. Right. Always a, a pleasure to come and sit and chat with you. Thank you again. And, and much success. And thank you for accepting the invitation. No I'll see you next time. Till then, good night. Take care. Bye.